Hey, YouTube. How's your day been? Uh, so most of us woke up to the PSA uh, shake up slash news first thing this morning. Uh, if you guys missed it, I cranked out a very quick, very quick uh, little four minute video, kind of quickly covering it. Uh, some more stuff has come out throughout the day regarding the changes. Um, people have had time to kind of process through things. Uh, so what I want to do really quick here is uh, just retouch on what's changing, how it affects us, and what our options are uh, going forward, how we're going to kind of handle this. So very quickly, for those that are not on any type of sports card social media at all, uh, that may have missed this, um, and this is the this this was not up this morning when I uh, recorded the video. Um, so PSA sent out their customer update for October 2020. Here's essentially the big changes. Um, the biggest one, and the one that is going to impact collectors and investors the most is the economy level is temporarily suspended. So. If you have cards there already, this does not affect you. You will cards will process like normal. I have two economy orders sitting there right now. They're just chucking their way through the system. However, you can no longer submit through economy for now. Quotes suspended, not terminated. Um, bulk minimum size orders for bulk has dropped to 20 cards. It was previously 50. However, declared value dropped to $99. I don't remember what it was before, but it is now $99, which is extremely low. Also, bulk turnaround times are probably about six to nine months. So there's that aspect of this as well. So why did they do this? Um, it's pretty clear that they were heading down the Oh, crap train. We have way too many orders sitting here. Uh, we need to do something. I had noticed the last month or so, um, the last two submissions that I sent in uh, for economy, it had said that there was about a four week wait to get the order checked in. Um, if any of you have never, if, not, if you guys have not used PSA before, uh, you send them the order. It essentially sits there for an estimated period of time. The order checks in, and that is when your clock actually starts. So I sent cards the 1st of August um, and the 1st of July. Both times I sent in, it the wait time was four weeks before checking in. Recently, the last couple of weeks, there had been posts, and, and this was confirmed because I went and looked. Uh, the wait time to check in went to nine to 10 weeks. That was just within the last couple of weeks. Um, so that tells me that was a red flag that, hey, we have a problem here, or, you know, there's, this is creeping towards a problem here. So essentially, what they've done today is basically pump the brakes and said, uh, hold on a second, guys. This is kind of what SGC did when they went to it's a little different because they have multiple tiers still. It's not as extreme as what SGC did, but it's kind of what SGC did where SGC went from, uh, hey, we don't really have if you want it super quick, pass a crap ton of money. Uh, if you don't, it can wait 10 bucks a card. See your cards next year. Um, they're not that extreme. They still have uh, some other things floating around. So. They're essentially pumping the brakes. They want to throttle orders. Um, what this is essentially with the economy order going away, economy was kind of the bread and butter for your average person. Uh, it was 20 bucks a card. It was about a three month turnaround time. All said and done, uh, you know, 20 business days to check it in, 40 to 50 business days to process it, about three months total, give or take. That was kind of what a lot of people gravitated to with bulk being a mess. People don't want to be without their cards for six to nine months. So people started sending everything economy. Uh, this trend had been happening since about 
March or April. I've been talking up. Use economy. Use economy. Everyone's been saying use economy if you're if you're not submitting bulk or through a submitter. Um, for large submission groups, this doesn't appear to affect much. Um, I checked out a couple of them today. Uh, the biggest one is PCP sport or PC sports cards. I think it's called. I looked at Card Collector two and a couple other ones. Um, they essentially increased their regular service pricing or their, you know, um, their version of uh, economy. Bulk submitters have different tiers that they could submit into that regular people don't see. So I think PC went to like 25 bucks a card. Uh, card Collector 2, I see, raised his to about 28 bucks a card. Um, you know, he's not as big as PC as PC submits like millions of cards. Um, so they probably get the best rates, but whatever. So they essentially want to streamline things to make it so they could get turnaround times better, uh, which is cool. My general takeaway here is, is that this is a short term problem for us as collectors slash investors, um, but it's probably going to be good for the long term. Uh, this is going to give PSA a chance to buy time once again, kind of like SGC did to kind of pump the brakes, because if you have lower dollar stuff, uh, you're really going to think about it now before you submit it. Um, the other thing that they're doing is essentially they're almost forcing you for anything mid tier to use a bulk submitter. Uh, or not bulk submitter, a group submitter. Let me rephrase because there's a difference. Um, to essentially use a large group submitter. Uh, and as part of that, they now have this new PSA dealer group submissions program. This is the least shocking thing ever. Um, I, I knew that this was coming because uh, a couple months ago, they cracked down and shut down a bunch of group subs that they didn't necessarily like the way that they were doing business. So now, essentially, there are pre-authorized PSA dealers that follow their rules and regulations to the T, uh, and those guys will get a little badge or something, probably, that they could stick on a website. They'll be listed on this website, uh, which is probably going to draw a lot of business to them, so it's a kind of a win-win for everybody. Why this is a win for PSA is because they'll be getting larger group submissions of thousands of cards versus hundreds of orders with 10 cards each in them. Also, the group submitters know what they're doing. So the cards are going to come the way PSA wants. They're going to have the proper documentation. They're going to be packaged correctly. They're going to be in the correct order because that's what these guys do for a living versus me, you and Joe Schmo that just kind of throw our crap in a, a priority mailbox, send it off and praise that it gets there and that it's in the right order. We don't order. Who cares about order? Um, which I get from them. It sucks for people like me that did not use a bulk. I didn't like to use bulk submissions. Um, I preferred to submit myself. Um, that is basically not possible now. I mean, you can. We're going to talk about pricing here in a second, um, but it just does not make financial sense to submit yourself. Uh, unless it's an extremely high dollar card that you're submitting through like an express or something like that. That's, you know, a slightly different story. So part of the rest, and I don't want to go through every little bullet, 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 bullet point here. If I can talk, it's been a very long day. Um, is they are going to, and I don't necessarily understand what all this means. Uh, they're going to change turnaround times to completed through dates. So essentially it sounds like they want to go to almost real time order tracking where you'll know exactly how many days it's going to be until your order is like being worked on. Um, you can see here later this quarter, PSA will begin to publicly po post complete through dates for every major service level. Customers will be able to see day to day progress as we advance through the backlog. Um, so in my mind, that's really good. If, if, you know, if that's what we get out of this, if they get remotely caught up, um, that's a win-win for everybody. Now, short term, 
sucks. Uh, it's really going to shake things up a little bit in regards to what you're going to grade, the timing for grading, um, and maybe even who you send it to. We're going to talk about that in a minute, too. Uh, so let's look. So this is essentially their current price list. This is from the blowout post from earlier. Um, so modern bulk and modern is mostly what we talk about around here. Ultra modern is 15 bucks a card now. $99 declared value. So the whole declared value $99 thing has been the buzzy thing floating around the internet today that people are not happy about. Here's how I handle declared value. I use PSA 9 price comps. I am not going to assume that I'm getting the 10. So I use PSA 9 price comps. If I get the 10 and they want to upcharge me, so be it. I'll let them deal with that. So that's how I'm going to continue to handle that. Now, for me, I usually do not submit bulk. I do not like having the cards out of my hand for that long. You're probably looking at a six to nine month turnaround time for bulk. I'm going to say six months conservatively. Um, economy, which used to be the $20 level, is now gone. It Regular is still there. That is 50 bucks a card. Um that's going to be a deal breaker for most people unless you're submitting something you need fast. And if you're submitting something that you need fast, you're probably just going to pay the extra 25 bucks and get it express. Let's be real. Uh, if it's that big of a card, you're going to want it back that much quicker to sell it. Um, so you're just going to pay the express price versus the, the regular price. So there's a massive gap here between 15 and 20 or between 15 and 50 there was that $20 service level, which is now gone. So as an average submitter, if you were submitting on your own, you are now either, oh, and this is the other thing that I forgot to mention, um, gold and platinum memberships are sold out. So the ones that give you vouchers are sold out. I believe you could still get a silver membership, which still gives you access to bulk pricing. Uh, and But with the drop to the 20 card of min, that is nice to only hit 20. I could hit 20 easy, no problem for a bulk order. The two problems there are the $99 declared value, however you want to look at that, and the turnaround time. Um, I'm just not one to have my cards gone that long. So essentially what we're forced to do is now turn to bulk submitters. Um, bulk submitters have the ability to charge differently. So you'll see, like I said, it's 20 to 30 bucks a card basically is what the going rate is going to be on bulk submission. And it should still be close to regular turnaround time. Uh, so you're probably looking at 40 business days at about 25 to 28 uh, dollars a card. So once again, they're basically forcing you to go that way. What are our other options? And what do we think that this means for the, the grading game? If you're flipping, if you're buying raw to flip, you're now going to have to use a bulk submitter. There's no way around that if you want to stick with PSA. So we see the PSA prices here. Once again, we're missing out on a bulk level price or not bulk group level submission that fills that 20 to $30 void, depending on who you use and depending on the price and the turnaround time, et cetera. But there's just no more submitting yourself for something in that range. It just doesn't exist. So the big discussion today has been, in fact, a lot of the comments on the video that I posted this morning are, is this now the time for SGC? Is this the time for BGS? Do we see their prices rising, et cetera? I don't know that we know yet. I personally do not think so. Here's the problem. Let's look at BGS. Well, let, let's start with this. Okay. You have a zion prism raw that you would like to send in and get back to sell around the beginning of next season what are our options okay psa i could send it myself at regular service for 50 bucks and get it back in about 40 to 50 business days okay i can submit it through a bulk or a group submitter for 20 to 30 bucks get it back in 40 to 50 business days. All right, that that seems more appealing. Um, as long as you have a group submitter that you're you're used to using and you're fine sending them your cards or dropping them off or whatever. All right, so that's PSA. 
you're looking between 30 and 50 bucks, depending on your situation. Let's say 30. Let's say you use a group submitter. You're going to send Mr. Zion off to your group submitter at 30 bucks. Uh, and that's on the high end. I think most are between 25 and 28 right now for the new regular service. Um, and you get it back in 40 to 50 days. All right. Let's say I'm done with PSA. Screw these guys. This is the stupidest thing ever. Blah, 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 blah. So you go log on the Beckett site. Let's look at Beckett. Okay. So we're sending in a single card. Maybe you're sending in a couple to go with it. Beckett, you want subgrades. 30 day, $30 a card. Okay. All right. So if I'm using a group submitter with PSA, I'm at the same price. Because I could use a group submitter with PSA uh, for under $30, actually. And, but we see this 30 day here. Oh, that's cool. They're going to get it back to me in 30 days. Oh, not so fast, my friends. Let's go look at Beckett's estimated turnaround times. Beckett's estimated turnaround times. 30 day submissions, approximately five to six plus, plus months. Whoops. So you send your Zion to Beckett for a 30 day submission. Uh, you pay 30 bucks, slightly more than you would have paid going through a group submitter to PSA. And you get it back in six plus months instead of 40 business days. That's not going to fly. Um, and there's going to be a part two to all of this. All right. Let's say, well, how about that new up and comer guy, SGC? I've heard some buzz about them. People are talking about them. What are they all about? So we are clearly not paying the hundred dollars for the two day turnaround time with SGC. So we're going to go with the everything else bucket, um, which is currently listed at 52 to 57 business days at um, Zion. We'll say will be $15 a card because uh, he's uh, well <laughs> between 10 and $15 a card. You could probably submit it $10 a card. They'd probably let it slide. So $10 a card. That sounds pretty good. 52 to 57 business days. Uh, that's okay. Here's the problem. I don't, there's two problems actually. One, I don't buy this number. They have to prove this to me first. Um, as has been well documented on this channel, SGC burned the industry uh, May, June, and July when they did not accurately reflect turnaround times. Currently, according to the blowout forums, which are fairly pretty reliable on this sort of stuff. They're just now getting to end of May, early June orders, which are running at 90 ish business days. So if they're just getting to June 1st orders now, it is October 1st. If I submit Zion to them tomorrow, how the hell are they going to get it back to me in 50 to 57, 52 to 57 days when they're still working on orders from June 1st? I don't think this is a real number. Um, so I'm not buying this. But let's say let's travel to fairy tale land where they actually will hit this number. We pay the $10, we send Zion off. Cool. Okay. So let's recap. PSA through a group submitter, $25 to $30 on the high end for a 40 to 50 day turnaround time. Okay. BGS, $30, I could submit myself, but it's a six month turnaround time. Now, you could make the argument, I could go through a group submitter for BGS and get it a little cheaper than $30. You are correct, but they are still stuck on the same six month turnaround time as everybody else. I'm in multiple Facebook groups that do BGS submissions and every day is people complaining about BGS turnaround times. BGS is a pure disaster right now. Um, or option C, we could go with SGC at the $10 level uh, and get it back in. Let's live in their fairy tale land, 52 to 57 business days. So slightly longer than PSA, but we save $20 on the card. Cool. All right, let's go to problem number two. Resale prices. Uh, this is Zion base prism in a PSA 10, an SGC 10, and a BGS 95. 
I'm not going to use BGS 10 and black label. I'm not going to use SGC gold label for this comparison because they are too hard to get. Uh, and it just does not make sense for a comparison standpoint. The pop counts on those are so low and it doesn't really, you're most likely going to get a BGS 9.5. You know, if you're lucky, you'll get the SGC 10, uh, but you're probably not getting a gold label. So we see Mr. Zion here in purple. This is a new little chart, by the way, that Market Movers has, which is kind of nice. Uh, last average sales, uh, and this was over a 30 day period. I went back to September 1st is $538 and a PSA 10. Okay. BGS $314. So once again, BGS, I don't believe is even a player when it comes to submitting your cards to them. You want to buy BGS slabs? I'll buy BGS slabs all day long. I would not submit my cards to them. Um, you're looking at $30 to submit to BGS longer turnaround time by about three X at minimum. And the card sells for uh, over $200 less. Why the hell would you submit it to BGS? Makes zero sense. So let's look at SGC. Cheaper to submit it to, $20 cheaper-ish, maybe $15. Uh, maybe you can even get a little cheaper. You use a bulk submitter. Uh, there's lots of SGC bulk submitters out there. Now you can get it down to maybe eight bucks a card. All right, cool. You got it cheaper. You're assuming you're going to get it back in 50 to 57 days. I think it's going to be 90 personally. I could be wrong. Um, what's their sales prices look like? SGC 10, assuming you pull the 10, 341, as opposed to the PSA for 538. So you're still talking about a $200 price difference. So... The question is, are you willing to spend the extra $20 to submit Zion to PSA to make an extra $180? Because you have the cost, the extra $20 cost associated with it. For me, that answer is yes. Uh, that is a no brainer. I am going to send the Zion to PSA, even with the changes. Uh, the trick now is, is that you just have to submit it through a group submitter. You just can't do it yourself. Uh, let's look at a different card. I have Trey Young pulled up here. Uh, Trey Young, PSA 10, 400, BGS 9.5, 187, over $200 price difference. SGC 10, 225, uh, $175 price difference. Minus the $20 extra to submit to PSA. You're still looking at... What is that? $150 more, uh, give or take, um, for the PSA 10 slab versus the SGC 10 slab. Biggest problem with SGC is their resale prices are terrible at the moment. Um, do I think this shakeup changes the varying pricing of the individual slabs compared to each other? Um, I do not think so. If anything, it may make PSA slabs even more valuable than they already are. I don't know that for sure, um, but who knows? But I'm just going to go with everything stays status quo. So uh, this is a long-winded way of saying, though, even though PSA switched things up, I don't know that it's going to change a lot of people's business practices. What it's going to do is shift more people to using bulk submitters. I'm sorry, I keep saying bulk submitters, group submitters. It's going to be it's going to push more people towards using group submissions versus submitting on their own, uh, which is good for PSA because it streamlines things on their end in regards to orders coming in uh, and it's going to cut down on the small economy orders. It's also going to cut down on just the number of cards that they get. A lot of people are going to say, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and sell this raw. If you have something kind of in between, you may just say it's not worth the time investment. I'm just going to go ahead and sell it raw now. And it, it is what it is. Uh, and that buys PSA time to catch up um, somewhat. Uh, there is no mythical world where PSA is ever fully caught up. PSA will never fully be caught up. Um, it does not make business sense for them to be fully caught up because if they are fully caught up, no one would ever pay for express service. Um, no one would ever pay for regular versus economy other than the declared value differences um, to get a card back faster 
uh, they're not going to pay through the nose if they are running all trains on time. There will always be a little bit of a backup, I think, with all these grading companies, uh, which is fine. I don't mind waiting as long as the turnaround times are accurate. That's the biggest key. Uh, so you know what you're getting yourself into, which it sounds like now this is on paper. I won't believe any of this crap until I actually see it, um, because all three of these companies basically run a con on the entire industry. Um, if PSA can get that real time tracking data up where you have like a countdown clock to when your order processes, at least that's the way I understand that. That's a little bit of a game changer um, if you could get that granular of a level. So if they take a time out here, catch up over the last quarter of the year and then kind of reopen the floodgates come first of the year. I mean, I don't know that that's their timeline. Um, you know, that could be a win for everybody. But in the short term, it's going to shake things up a little bit. So, like I said, moral of the story, I think this is just going to move more business to group submitters. If you are a group submitter, you are probably happy today because uh, you are going to get a lot more business, I predict. More people are going to send you their stuff to submit for them, which means more money in a group submitter's pocket. Um, and then that makes PSA happy because they have more larger orders coming in versus more smaller orders coming in. So, um that's kind of my thoughts on this subject. I'm sure there's going to be more little things that trickle out of this. Um, if it does, I'll probably, I'll surely touch on this in the week that was uh, at the end of the week for Sunday morning. But I just kind of wanted to do a more long form video on what all this nonsense means and how it affects things. Long story short, I don't know that it changes that much other than forcing you to use a group submitter now instead of submitting on your own. That's how I view this. Uh, and it is going to cost you slightly more per card. Economy was 20 bucks. You're now looking at 25 to 28 dollars a card, which is not nothing. Um, uh, you know, if you have 100 cards to submit, that adds up pretty quick. Myself personally, I tend to do more smaller orders, like 10 to 20 card orders versus 100 to 125 card orders. Uh, I don't rip enough stuff. Um, to have a bunch of crap to send into grade. So for me, this isn't necessarily a huge, this isn't a huge game changer for the way that I do business. The way that it's going to change for me is moving to a group submitter. I like to submit myself. Now I am personally probably going to look at card collector too. He's more expensive than PC sports, but the reason why I'm heading that direction is because I can drop off at his store. So I save the money on the shipping to and from the bulk submitter and the insurances and all that stuff just by being able to walk it into his store and be able to walk in and pick it up. So the price increase hurts me a little bit, but it is semi negated by the 30 or $40 I would spend to ship it because usually my grading submissions I splurge and spend for next day shipping plus the insurance on top of there usually puts you at, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks, depending on how you're shipping it and how many cards are in it. So um, that's all I got for you guys today. If, I'm sure there'll be lots of comments down below. We'll work through this, but any questions, any concerns, any questions, whatever. Uh, leave them down in the comments below. Click like buttons, click subscribe buttons if you're not subscribed to the channel. Uh, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Next video, I was planning on doing one Friday, but I think I'm going to pause for a minute uh, since I dropped three videos in the last two days between the live Q&A uh, and then the two PSA videos, the one this morning and now this one. Uh, next video is probably going to be the week that was Sunday morning. And then the next non-regularly scheduled video will probably be early next week. I'm going to do one on how to protect yourself in this hobby regarding um, people running scams and things to avoid and stuff like that. Uh, that seems to be a hot button issue lately. So it's kind of going to be like a little public service announcement. Uh, G.I. Joe, the more you know, type video. So um, have a good weekend, guys. I will catch you on the next video Sunday morning. Peace.